Hello everyone, my name is Roman Jindihashvili and the topic of uh, today's lecture is intuition. Now, what is intuition? Let me tell you a couple of components of the intuition. How do you develop your intuition? When you play a lot of games, and you need to play a lot of games, uh, you get various different types of position. Uh, and when you play them, you see they don't turn out good or they turn out very good. That's how you develop intuition. But that may be also misleading. For example, you play positions that are bad and your opponent played badly and you won. That may leave wrong impression that all those positions are good. So no, you have to be guided and you, your intuition should be directed by someone who is better than you and also you have to be taught what evaluation of the positions is based on. Well, it's a lot more difficult to tell you in the words, it's a lot easier to tell you with examples, to show you the examples. First, I, I took my couple of games of mine and they are extremely interesting to see how my intuition was developing. And games are from 1962 and 1965. It's almost 45 years ago. So, first game was played against the Grandmaster at that time he was Grandmaster and I was I think like a low master, I want the master then, I was master and I was black and with white was playing Igor Wondereski former coach of Boris Pasky e4 c6, knight f3 d5 knight c3 d e Knight takes e4, knight f6, and queen e2. Now, I was, I was fortunate enough in the early part of my early stage of my career to have very good coaches to discipline me in chess very properly and taught me chess the right way. Now, queen e2 move cannot be good. What is it based on? If I go knight d7, I'm going to get checkmated? Is that it? No. Uh, well, this is not good enough reason to make anti-positional move. Apparently, my opponent took me lightly. He played queen e2, knight takes e4, queen takes e4, knight uh, d7, d7, bishop c4, Knight f6, black just develops pieces, queen e2, bishop f5, d4, e6, c3, bishop g6, that's an accurate move, uh, better was bishop e7, castle, nothing uh, exciting yet, bishop e7, knight e5, castle and now white all of a sudden white has slightly better position if they simply played a knight takes g seat followed by rook e1 however white decided to go very sharp and I believed strongly it's anti-positional White went h4. This is typical move for those positions if white didn't castle. White wants to go g4 and h5. h4, the idea is to go g4 and trap the bishop on h7 because on h6 black's pawn structure will be ruined. After h4, 
bishop e4 was played. I tried to relocate bishop to d5. And now g4, threatening g5, winning a piece. I want bishop d5. And after bishop d3, I went c5. Because the threat is c4, winning my bishop. So I went c5. And white played d takes c. This is very instructive position for any chess player of any level. I could have simply taken the pawn on c5, but I believed my coaches uh, who told me that moves like h4 and g4 with a rook on f1 bishop on c1 and rook on a1 it's highly anti-positional i am 100 percent sure that my opponent grandmaster bondarevsky knew it too because he did teach chess the right way he taught boris pasky uh, one of the students and yet he taught many other grandmasters but however he put me to test and I did not take on c5 because I decided to punish black and now punish white why didn't I play bishop take c5 I will explain because I tried to avoid g5 knight d7 and queen h5 and if I go g6 in this position white has perpetual check and therefore white will uh, escape unpunished and my goal and I was strongly believe I was a young player then and um, and I was very aggressive as well uh, and I wanted to play, I didn't care about c5 pawn, and I wanted to play for an attack. I want knight d7, trying to avoid perpetual check. Knight takes d7, queen takes d7, c4, bishop c6, and b4. Okay, white defended its extra pawn, but now they have pawns on b4, c4. I have laser kind of bishop on c6 that controls the board. And white has very weakened king. At the same time, white threatens to go d b5. Um, after b4, bishop f6 was played. Rook b1. Now rook fd8 was played. White has no time for b5, obviously, yet. After rook fd8, rook d1, queen c7 was played. Bishop e3. Now it's time for me to take advantage of these weaknesses on g4 and h4. I went bishop a4 and white answered with rook d to c1. That's a real bad move. Supposed to be played bishop c2, trying to exchange some pieces. But my opponent played rook d to c1 because he thought bishop on a4 is placed well, badly. And, but bishop on a4 controls the diagonal, <coughs> a4 d1 diagonal and discomforts white rooks. Now, bishop d4, and intuitively I feel here that I must be winning. I must be winning because my uh, I dominate on d-file, white's king is weakened, and I can, after exchanging dark square bishop, my queen can penetrate and I, I thought white's position was very, very bad at this point. Bishop g5 was played. 
Uh, I don't know if it was a blunder or uh, deliberately allowed me to play queen g3 check. Well, anyway, I did play queen g3 check, king f1, queen h3 check, king e1, and bishop takes f2, check, king d2, and now I simply played bishop takes h4. This is also positionally intuitive sacrifice. Actually, it's very elementary. Bishop takes d8, rook takes d8. And at this point, after rook takes d8, white is totally lost, and that's exactly the way I evaluated this position. Bishops, white, black's bishops riddling the board, and they are absolutely controlling uh, the whole board and center, together with coordinated action of rook on d8 and queen on h3. White is totally lost, and I had no doubt in my mind that there should be some kind of a shot that will win the game quickly. So what happened, rook h1, and now it's a simple calculation, rook takes d3, ends the game, because queen takes d3, and every move is forced from now on. Bishop g5, check. King c3, only move. Bishop f6, check. Well, now why king c3 is the only move? Because I'm king e2, queen g2, and white loses the rook on h1. So, king c3 was the only move. Now bishop f6 check, king d2, now queen g2 check, queen e2, and now bishop g5 check, king d3, every move is forced. And now final blow is bishop c2 check and white loses queen and the game because if king moves black is going to take white's queen and queen takes and queen f3 check followed by the mate next move bishop f6 mate or even queen e3 checkmate now, intuitively I thought, and I was very happy about it, uh, that my intuition worked, but it was elementary now, everyone knows that this type of positions are slam dunk positions. Now, let's go to next game, and that was played three years later in international tournament, uh, in quite strong international tournament in 1965 and we go to that position d4 I played this position against then international master Jansa from Czechoslovakia and uh, it's an interesting story uh, to this game. After this game was over, a couple of weeks later, I lived in Georgian uh, city of Tbilisi, and uh, Tigran Petrosian was visiting there. He was on peak of my career, and I was showing him the game that I was very proud of, and he absolutely amazed me with his suggestion. And that I will never forget if I live another hundred years. Well, this is perfect example of flawless intuition by former world champion. I think at that time he was, he might have been a world champion. Uh, knight f6, c4, I'm white, c5, d5, e5, knight c3, d6. Bishop, uh, knight c3, d6, e4, g6, 
it's a wrong way to play King's Indian type of position today. Uh, bishop e2, bishop g7, knight f3, castle. Actually, one of the reasons I was showing this game to Petrosian because I played bishop g5 move. And this move had a name of Petrosian system. That's his system. Bishop, um, and uh, after bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, um, g5, bishop g3, knight h5, h4 was played, knight f4, hg, hg, and king f1. White has open h file and potential weakness of light squares on the king side and bad bishop on g7. King f1, f5, ef, rook takes f5, actually bishop takes f5, now knight d2, that's a good positional move, we want to play knight d2 to e4. <coughs> After knight e2, knight takes e2. Also, positional threat is bishop g4, exchanging light square bishops. So knight takes e2 was played. Queen takes e2. Queen f6. This is terrible position for uh, black. And I made here a very powerful move. Normally you want to put knight on e4. But then black goes queen g6, but we always have to keep a, an eye on e4 knight. What happened in the game, I made a very strong move, queen h5, after which queen g6 is not good because we will take and go knight e4, attacking two pawns on g5 and d6. So after queen h5, bishop d3 check was played. King g1 and bishop bishop g6 and now knight d to e4 very strong move again bishop takes h5 knight takes f6 bishop takes f6 rook takes h5 bishop e7 now, this is a big, big advantage for white in this position. So I went rook h6, white has much better bishop, dominating square on e4, an activity of, uh, of a rook on h file. Rook h6 was played, that was a good move, rook d8. Knight e4 was played. King g7, rook e6 was played, king f7, and I played king f1. Let me show you the way game developed first, and then I will show you the absolutely amazing suggestion by Petrosian. King f1, that helped me a lot in developing my intuition which is now, I think my intuition is pretty good, and I attribute this, uh, I give a credit a lot to uh, Tigran Petrosian for analyzing this game. First I'm going to show you the way game has developed. After King F1, Knight C6 was played by my opponent, Rook H6 King g7, because on knight d4, I'm going to give rook h7 check, and black has terrible position. King g7 was played, and now simply rook takes d6. I was proud of this sacrifice, and it's very good sacrifice. White has winning position. d takes c. Now black cannot recapture because knight takes bishop, followed by bishop takes on e5, check. So what happened in this position after this bishop c7, and now knight takes c5, 
threatening knight e6 check and uh, uh, black made uh, just a few moves more and the game was over king f7 was played c takes b rook a to b8 b4 white is absolutely winning and it's needless to say that black is helpless and I won shortly after. Now let's go back to the position when I was proudly showing uh, you know, my idol at that time, Petrosian, how well I played and how strong my, was my king f1 move. Idea is to play king e2 and rook h1. He said, yeah, this is pretty good, but it took him I would say less than five seconds to come up with a absolutely murderous suggestion for white. Now this is a position with no queens on board, but this is by no means is an endgame position. And the way it opened my eyes in the future and analyzing positions, some opening positions and I use this phrase many times if there are no queens on board that does not make it an endgame position Petrosian's suggestion was rook f1 and on any move at all that black makes, for example knight a6 f4 and black is absolutely totally lost so instead of take, making 14 moves or 15 moves for me to win this position I could have won in three moves <coughs> and obviously Petrosian did not analyze any consequences when he's suggesting rook f1 but his intuition was so perfect that after f4 g takes f bishop takes f4 it it's absolutely, absolutely killing continuation. And I don't know, if you put this position on any engine you can access, like Fritz, Crafty, whatever you want to do, they will all tell you that in this position, black has maybe two, three moves to leave, and black is totally destroyed but move rook f1 in this position will not too many computers will show right away I put this on a Ripka and Ripka came up with f3 suggestion with and king f2 I had to give her a lot long more time much more time than Petrosian to to come up with rook f1 and after rook f1, it took Petrosian, as I said, maybe two, three seconds to come up with it. And I was absolutely stunned, amazed. And as I already mentioned, maybe I'm mentioning it too many times, as I already mentioned, this is absolutely amazing. And it helped me a lot in chess in the future. So rook f1 and black has no defense it's amazing it's great and that's why he was a world champion with uh, impeccable positional sense so if you play more games and you see the games of good players great players where you see the ideas like this that should help you a great great deal and I in my opinion this is absolutely amazing thank you very much and I hope you learn a lot from this lecture thank you